In this Proteus DS training session, we're going to cover fundamentals of oceanographic mooring design with Proteus DS Oceanographic. This is the East Australia current. What's nice about this is that it shows the complexity and scale of full ocean currents. There's a lot of eddies, uh, this changes in time, and quite a lot of flow along the coast uh, that can have quite a range in, in magnitude. CSIRO and IMOS have installed a subsurface mooring array, the EAC, East Australia Current Mooring Array, uh, off the coast of Brisbane in Australia to measure this current and try to characterize what's happening and the changes in time as well. There's many subsurface moorings in this array. This is a simplified kind of schematic of where the subsurface moorings are. And they cover a range of water depths from a few hundred meters all the way over to full ocean depth, covering thousands of meters in, in length. If you really want to understand what's happening to the ocean, you have to make measurements. These feed into numerical models of the ocean, of course, but you've got to get data at some point. Because these moorings are so long, they can have hundreds of components in them consisting of shackles, wire, frames, floats, instruments, and so on. So how can we find ways to design moorings that may range from water depths of less than hundreds of meters to 6,000 meters in full ocean depth? How can these systems be designed to, checked, uh, to be checked quickly and systematically? What are design process requirements that reduce failure from wind, waves, and currents? And how can we collaborate and leverage previous designs to make this process easier? Proteus DS Oceanographic is a solution. What we're going to cover is an overview of the design process. The first stage, detailed mooring design, checking steady loads, that is from things like ocean current, and then checking dynamic loads from waves and uh, deployments and recoveries of moorings. Okay, first we're going to go into the detailed process overview, the design process overview. What does the design process look like? Generally, we're looking at an assessment of forces and loads in the components. We're not talking about con considering corrosion, instrument performance, and that sort of thing. A lot of times when we talk about What's happening with the mooring? We talk about mooring compliance. And this is in a dynamic conditions, uh, the give and take that prevents the, the, the loads from blowing up, getting really, really high and components failing. Note that we have a blog that you can subscribe to uh, where we post articles on topics like this, among many other things with regards to mooring design and hydrodynamics. Check it out at dsaocean.com slash blog. Invariably, the mooring design process is a spiral, a design spiral. You start off with initial design, you might be starting from scratch, you might be using a previous design that you worked with that you can make adjustments to. And you often need quick initial load checks on the mooring. After this, you check what happens to the mooring in a steady current and possibly make adjustments to the design. And finally, you want to check what's happening to the system and what the loads and deflections are on the mooring in dynamic conditions like in ocean waves, and you may need to make more adjustments to the design. This is a handy flowchart uh, to just kind of show at any point. You start off in the green circle with detailed design, and you may be making adjustments to design after doing a steady load check and currents and going back to detailed design. Go through it all again and check dynamic loads and waves. Again, you may be going back and adjusting the, the detailed design of the mooring. So at a high level, these are the sort of the stages you consider when you're going through the mooring design and verification process. So what is Proteus DS Oceanographic? It's a collection of software programs. These are purpose-built to help with oceanographic mooring design and the design process. These programs consist of the parts library editor, designer, Proteus DS simulation toolbox, post PDS, and a few other things as well to help along the way. Let's move on to the next section, though, on detailed mooring design. 
So what do we mean by detailed and mooring design? What does this uh, what does this entail exactly? Well, I mean, it's just like what it says. It's going through the process of the detailed layout of all the components and instruments in the mooring. What shackles are you going to use? Master links, wire rope, chain, fiber rope, frames, buoys, floats. These are all examples of components. Um, instruments are important too. Like, are you going to be using clamp-on CTDs or are they inline in, in the mooring itself? If you're using frames, for example, or subsurface floats, that sort of thing. Uh, is a picture of the very commonly used seabird conductivity, temperature, and depth instrument. So why is managing parts in detailed design important? Well, a lot of the mooring performance involves aggregate effects of all of the components, like the total length of the mooring, the weight, and that sort of thing. Keeping track of important parameters of parts is, is not easy when there's so many parts around. The inside length is a, is a critical parameter to really understanding what the aggregate length of the mooring is. It's drawn here on the shackle. It's the, the length that adds to the length of the mooring line. It may not seem like a really you know, big deal, but when you've got you know, dozens and dozens of these shackles, it all adds up. Other things that add up are, of course, the mass and the wet weight of all the components as well, right? Uh, the, the aggregate weight of the whole mooring, you know, it, it adds up to be a lot. You really want to keep track of all the information. But you've got to keep track of other things too, like the working load limits, minimum breaking loads, and so on. Depth ratings, depth ratings is also can be crucial to make sure you're avoiding failures. Another challenge is that manufacturers are always making new products. Sometimes they stop making products and they change their websites around. And it's uh, you don't always have all the information you need on a spec sheet. A lot of uh, pitfalls when you go through this process yourself is it's really easy to make. Uh, data entry mistakes. Um, you know, just did you put in the wrong number by accident or um, did you get confused with um, uh, units uh, or what, what this number actually means? You might be using the slightly incorrect or out of date spec sheet, which, is a, which can be a big problem. And if you catch the problem, you may be spending a lot of extra time and effort trying to figure out what's going on. Um, you certainly don't want to find out with, uh, that there was a problem through a mooring failure, of course, as well. What does a spec sheet look like? Uh, this is a pretty common sort of typical look for a spec sheet. I think this is a Crosby galvanized shackle, and you can see there's a lot of information that goes along with all the different shackle sizes. Dimensions, inside length is in there, uh, the weight as well, uh, stock numbers, and so on. So there's a lot of information, and there isn't a standardized format for these spec sheets. So every different manufacturer of shackles has something that looks a little bit different. Here's an example of what you might find on a website for, uh, this is Mooring Systems, uh, website for float sizes. A lot of really useful information here, but it's not everything you need to know, uh, especially if you want to look at uh, the dynamics of a mooring system response in waves. So the Proteus DS Oceanographic Parts Library Editor has a lot of ways of making it easy to put information in. On top of that, we've also put together uh, an official parts library that everyone has access to. Uh, it's publicly available. We've gone through the process of adding a lot of parts to it and working with suppliers to get information in here that's missing from their website, website or spec sheets. The official parts library is one of the free downloads available. <clears throat> In addition to that, the, the de Oceanographic Designer uh, and Parts Library Editor are freely available. Um, you can go to these uh, and find these on our website, uh, the DSA Ocean website at the moment. We add new equipment to the official parts library pretty regularly, and we're checking the entries that we put in, uh, and, and it's being reviewed and vetted by DSA staff please contact us and ask for more entries and ideas for components. It helps everybody working with the software. Uh, I mean, it saves time because other people don't have to find it. Um, and it speeds up collaboration for everyone as well. What does the designer look like? This is the program to actually use to, to click together the components in the design. Uh, this is an example of what designer looks like with looking at the EAC mooring, the 4200 meter water depth mooring. Um, 
the main design window has lines and assemblies uh, listed out there. Um, in the sub-assembly window on the right hand side is where you can add attachments to things like subsurface floats, the number of instruments and things like that. You'll notice a lot of aggregate information like the total mooring length, the scope, um, and uh, weights of the assemblies and so on and so forth. You can export a bill of materials so direct, it's automatically produced by what you've put together for the system. It gives you uh, uh, component counts. Um, there's an assembly layout as well, which gives the order that the systems are, are added in as well. And these are in Excel file format, so they're pretty easy to work with. So again, just to review, this is the first stage in the detailed design. When you're putting together the mooring, um, you, there's some estimates on the, the top tension and anchor tension. That's based on the static weight and points of the mooring. But it's the first step in going through the mooring design process. After you've checked the, the loads from static weight and buoyancy, the next thing you want to know is like, well, what's, what's happening when we've got a basic loading scenario, a static loading scenario, steady loads from uh, current, sometimes also from wind as well, though most of the time it doesn't have a strong role, especially for subsurface mooring design, of course. So that takes us to the next section on checking steady loads. So what happens in currents? Well, there's going to be some mooring deflection and the loads increase, generally speaking, because you've got additional loading on the mooring from drag. When we talk about deflection, we're talking about horizontal excursion, vertical knockdown, as well as these systems uh, uh, are constrained by their anchor, they're rotating a little bit and then things go down. The problem with vertical knockdown, of course, is you're getting some, uh, potentially some sensors may have errors depending on how that, uh, how they change. Um, and there's the crush depth of, of uh, flotation and, of course, a lot of sensors have depth ratings you have to keep an eye on as well. And the mooring will tilt as well. And this causes uh, more sensor errors, especially things with like ADCPs that just, they just stop working and they stop getting reliable data collection at uh, greater than 15, typically greater than 15 degrees. Of course, there's higher loads. Again, there's going to be drag on the mooring. Um, you need to be checking what the, the, the tensions are in the components um, and comparing it to the, the minimum braking load for, for the components. And otherwise, if, that, if you don't have information on that, the working load limit, of course, as well. So that's checking what's happening in uh, static and steady loads. Uh, finally, uh, in the last stage, checking what's happening in dynamic conditions, in dynamic winds, waves, and currents. This happens a lot with surface moorings. Things get complicated when there's ocean waves and you get these dynamic loads happening. So what happens in these conditions? You're getting a lot more system motion proportional to what's happening to the, to the waves that are, uh, that are possible. Um, you get these accelerations in the surface motion. Um, this can be exacerbating a lot of the deflections of the moorings and tilt angles that you that you see in a static and a steady load case. In dynamic loads, uh, you can be getting slack conditions as well as peak loads and snap loads in the moorings. This is going to be on top of any mean loading you get from the, the, the currents you're considering and what, what might be possible at your site. So generally, when there's you, you're going to get higher loads when there's waves around, and you really need to be looking at and investigating that peak tension. Again, that's got to be less than the minimum breaking load of the of the system, and you should really be using a safety factor on top of that. For subsurface moorings, if they're far enough from the surface, maybe the dynamic effect isn't that big of a problem. But still, the closer you get to the surface, the more of a problem it's going to be. So that's covering dynamics and the dynamic loading. Uh, here's another example of a, a data well wave buoy mooring. Um, this is a, 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 one of the sample cases you can download off our website as well. Um, it's a fairly straightforward mooring but and can be adjusted for different water depths as well. So it's, it's not all just for complex. Uh, the software is not just for, for super complicated moorings. This is a snapshot of Proteus DS simulation toolbox. So uh, this is completed a simulation of what happens to the system in a static current configuration. In this current profile, 
that's what the mooring deflection looks like. Uh, this is the and, and it's giving some indication of the the mooring load as well, which is relatively low. This is a visualizer program we use called Post PDS to to show what the mooring looks like in uh, in the environment conditions. So in review, uh, we we covered what detailed mooring design looks like. It goes going through the process of setting up all the components and instruments and tweaking the positions of things, making sure that you've, you've got things set up the way that you want. Um, we talked about checking things in steady conditions and, and checking dynamic loads and waves as well. Um, and each stage along the way gives you an opportunity to make adjustments to the mooring. When we talk about ProDSDS Oceanographic, just be aware there's a lot of free functionality available, free tools available. The official parts library is freely available. Parts library editor and the designer, those are freely available downloadable programs. Um, if you want to get into more detailed analysis, you want to see what happens with wind waves and currents, you need a commercial license to work with the software. And that provides you access to working with ProDSDS simulation toolbox, post PDS, and so on. So again, the, the goal of this was to cover uh, the design process um, cover the detailed mooring design stage, checking steady loads and checking dynamic loads. Thanks for your attention.